All right, Chris, thanks for being here with me. I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, I love talking to colleagues, so I really appreciate it. Oh yeah, no problem. I'm excited to be here and uh, thank you for having me on, of course. Most definitely. I actually, I came across your profile, Matchmaker, I think, FM, but then I saw YouTube and I really liked it. Oh, okay. And I, I thought you were talking about some interesting topics. <laughs> More than... Yeah, so my YouTube, you either love it or you hate it. And, okay. Uh, now, most people that, that have a love for fitness and, uh, and they're appreciative, they tend to like my YouTube. So um, I try to give it a different perspective where most people don't don't look at it that way. And um, so that's that's pretty much my goal with the YouTube. Well, I really I like was really resonating with that because a lot of times when I do talks and stuff, I try to give a very different perspective on the business mm -hmm. and different things. Like, I'll tell you one thing I thought was funny. But I was like, I'm totally with this about like what people are wearing at gyms, especially when like, you know, oh, let's say like when just to be honest, like when especially when women may wear things that are overly revealing. Right. I feel like, why doesn't anybody talk about this? You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I think we've gotten to a point in society where, uh, you know, we let things go and, yeah. you know, people have to speak up. You can't be scared to speak up because um, let's be real. We're at the gym to get better. Um, we're there for mental health. We're there to get healthier. We're not there to 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 reveal ourselves. And that goes for men and women. That's right. And, you know, as focused as you are, you know, as locked in as you could be, it's hard not to see that. You know, if you see yeah. somebody with, it, with a certain body part out and then in my gym and a lot of gyms across the country, you got kids training, um, kids training for sports. They train for weight loss. And some of them just just train like, you know, general general population clients. And um, I think that's disrespectful to the parents because no parent is bringing their kids to the gym to see that. And it's crazy. Like, even I have people in the gym now, they'll be like, um, kids will be fine. They, they can see a little bit. They can see a little bit of, of <laughs> butt, a little bit of butt cheek. And it's like, are you crazy? Are you crazy? Like, it, it's crazy. So somebody got to speak up. And I feel like I'm that guy. What's the uh, reaction when you talk about these things? Oh, man, I get I get all types of stuff. Like I said, people love it or hate it. And um and my my DM and, and my comments are crazy, man. I get I get called all type of names. I get called the R word. Um, you know, I get called a deadbeat. I mm. get called a typical trainer because you know male trainers we get a bad rap uh, because of the you know the, the you know <laughs> guys in the industry unfortunately. Yeah. So you know I get called all types of names, but um it's, it's not gonna stop me from doing what I do. I get a I get a lot of a lot more love than yeah. Hate. Yeah. So what do you think it is like with uh, I've been in the business a long time and, you know, people are always kind of dressed up or wore different things in the gym. But like what is different about now? Is it the social media aspect of things? Like I always see people doing selfies and stuff like that. And or like, is it like going to the gym to be noticed? Well, you know, with attention is the new currency. So yes. you know, social media has played a role on society. Everybody wants to be seen. And it's like that you you uh, fulfilling. It's like you get an adrenaline rush. You get a lot of likes. You get a lot of comments. It's a great feeling. Like you know, I've I've had posts go viral, and I I feel accomplished. I feel good about yeah. myself. So I understand that. But you want to be getting attention for the right things, and you know, the internet is forever. And so you put certain things out there. It's gonna follow you. People are gonna <laughs> people are gonna see it. And then, you know, I, I feel bad for, for kids, you know, because kids are harsh. I know growing up, kids made all types of jokes. They made jokes about my mom, dad. So if you give kids a reason to talk about your mom and it, yeah. you got something on the internet revealing yourself, that's going to be hard on the kid. It's going to cause some issues. So, um, you know, I, I think it's crazy, but attention is definitely the new currency. It's kind of like this digital dopamine hit, you know? Yeah. It's yeah, no, absolutely. Like I said, it's it, it's a great feeling when when you when you get that uh, attention on the internet. So um, and like even the the post where I talked about the girl having her her butt showing at the gym, you know, that's almost at a million views on TikTok. So yeah, that's a good feeling, <laughs> right? It's, it's, see, that's what I want to talk. See, that's like the honesty behind yeah. it. It's like okay, this is weird, but and maybe bad, but it's also a good feeling at the same time. Right. How do you come? How do you reconcile that? Well, this is the thing. It's um, it's all about 
uh, what do you want to stand for? So, so uh, you know, what what type of man do I want to be? And, you know, I want to be known as an honest guy, told the truth, uh, you know, ethical guy, ha have some morals. Um, you know, I have respect for other people. I'm knowledgeable about my craft. You know, that's the that's the kind of man I want to be. So um, I, I feel like to to not speak on it is like, you know, a form of being a coward almost mm. because I was wrong. And, you know, I see people not speaking up on it. So sometimes I feel like that's that's my lane. And at the same time, I feel like I'm I'm living my purpose when, when um, you know, I was blessed to fall into the personal training accidentally. And, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be in it for, for six years, almost six and a half. And, um, you know, I feel like I'm just I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do when I when yeah. I speak up. So, yeah. Is it hard to stay on the path that you're on when certain types of videos or things feed that dopamine hit? And if maybe if it's not exactly what you want it to be. Um, you mean for myself or like Yeah, for yourself or just anyone like to say like maybe you put out a video that's like so like big video and you're like this is kind of not what I'm trying to do, but it got big, you know. Um well, yes and no. I I kind of I kind of want my stuff to get out there. Uh, yeah. because ob obviously like I said, it's cool to get the attention, but I feel like there's a bigger message behind it. And I feel like the gym culture is changing. You know, the gym is becoming the new club. And <laughs> it's true, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. And as personal trainers, as fitness coaches, I feel like we're like, in a sense, we're superheroes, kind of. You know, we change lives, we save lives. And if it continues to become the club, that's going to diminish what we do for people. Mm. And, it's, yeah, it's going to diminish, um, you know, the clients that we've helped, the clients that love us till this day, the clients that continue to come to us because we changed their lives and made an impact on them. People don't see that. And even with some of my videos, I, I get real controversial for anybody that's watching this that, that doesn't that doesn't know me. I get real controversial. People think I just do the stuff for engagement and, right. and attention, but at the same time, now I'm, I'm bringing attention to real issues. Um, you know, like just, you know, a couple of recent topics I talked about, just the one we just mentioned, mm -hmm. I mean, wearing revealing clothing. I talk about steroids. I talk about alcohol. Um, you know, I talk about a lot of things that hit people hard. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's tough. I mean, I just really resonated with it because I was like, of all, I said, man, this is a different take in our business. Cause sometimes in our business, I've been in like 23 years as a trainer, like we get this whole thing of like, you know, well, there's a trainer is this way. It looks this way. It's this way. The clients all want to be fit. Not all people want to be that fit that come to you. Some people yep. want to work that hard and some people are just not in it for that. Yep. And I feel like being honest about that, like not every client you're going to work with is trying to become the fittest person that, that they could be. Yeah, and some no. people are. It's OK. You know. And, and that's what it's about. It's about giving the client what, what they want and, you know, just making them aware of like like if they're going down the wrong path, um, you know, the consequences that can come with that. Yeah, that, that's all it's about. But, uh, you know, as long as the client's happy. And they feel like you're fulfilling uh, what they want. That's all that matters. So you mentioned about I was laughing about the the gym becoming like the club. Besides the dress code, <laughs> what are some other things that's making the gym become the club potentially? Man, oh man, we could talk about this all day. <laughs> uh, you know, you have people in there to hang out. You have people not really working out, and um, you know, I deal with this. I, I told this yesterday. You know, I'm in the gym. I had to work out in the evening. Um, usually I work out in, the, in uh, you know, midday when the gym isn't crowded. But I had a busy day, so I had to go in the evening. And you just got people in there talking, want to shake hands, <laughs> talk about sports. You know, I was stretching the other day. I had a dude coming up to me complaining about a woman in the gym. and She got some guy's number. And it's like, bro, what? Come on. We here. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Um but it just is it's sitting around people just not being focused on on what the gym is for. Um, you got people, you know, with the tripods posting on social media. Like I'll be training my clients and there's one girl, she'll have the tripod and her phone up and be in the camera. Like she'll do a sprint and then start dancing. And, the, and, the, and it's like, it's like, yo, I'm all for people shooting their content. Sure. Want to post it. I'm fine with that. But you dancing. Not, now you come on now. 
that's not <laughs> literally dancing, man. So, um, yeah, it, it's 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 getting crazy. I see all types of stuff in the gym, but uh, you know, I, if I if I can make an impact and I can yeah. impact other trainers to to bring the the real gym culture back, I'm all for it. Yeah, it's like club issues coming into the gym. <laughs> it was like, yeah. you know, beef and stuff, and like, uh, you know people hitting on each other, whatever like that. It's like, uh, but it, it, is it also that people are more dis- like they're distracted at the, at the gym too. A lot of people I feel are very distracted. Like they're not, they're not actually taking in what they're going to be doing. They're just being distracted there. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the, yeah, they're definitely distracted. And a lot of people go just to say they went like, you know, <laughs> it's I true. <laughs> crazy. I see so many guys, the guys and the girls, I see so many go and their body has been the same since yeah. before the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's like if people locked in and they had that purpose and it's like, right, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to give at maximum effort. Yeah. I'm going to do my cardio. I'm going to lock in, not going to talk. And I'm, I'm going to be clean when I leave. I, I just feel like things would be different. I mean, how can the, how can the gyms do better at promoting let's say a healthier gym culture Mm -hmm. um well one the the dress code (laughs) (laughs) this is a big topic man for sure yeah yeah, definitely the dress code um that's a good question i've never been asked that you called me on the spot yeah man putting your weights back you know if if jim said you know somebody you know actually walking around and there was you know consequences for not putting your weights back that'd be a big yeah. thing uh guys you know being inappropriate towards girls mm. if they were reported you, you banned from the gym right uh, you know because some 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 guys do some crazy stuff in the gym I've got, <laughs> you know i train mostly women so i hear stories yeah. and um yeah those, those are probably three things i think that would change the gym culture uh make people be a little bit more serious in there obviously it's not gonna you know fix everything but uh it could be a start i know you mentioned about people having content and posting things of that nature but where, where does that cross the line like I, i've for instance like i've seen things where people are like listen i don't want to be in your video and then you'll have enthusiasts whatever will be making fun of other people in their own video that they're mm-hmm. not working hard like that yeah. just seems cruel to me you know it's like yeah. they didn't ask to be in your video you know yeah no, I, I I think that's definitely a problem. That's definitely crossing a boundary. Um, I think a lot of times with the with the women, just you know, having having their butt all in the camera. Yeah, it's like you know, if you're performing a squat, obviously we're gonna see something, but sure, you, you know what's overboard. Guys in there, you know, just just with their shirt off. The shirt and, off, yeah, I see that a I, lot. Yeah, not real. And it's one thing if you you know you took your shirt off to and you did um you know something that was hard and accomplished you know you want to show your back muscles on pull ups, okay. But sometimes I mean you want to do a burpee backflip, <laughs> do a leg raise like bro you know, come on man like you just want attention at this point. Uh, but yeah man, it's it's there's definitely um, crossing the boundary. I'm trying to think of some more. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of uh, making fun of people at all because no. you know it, it takes a lot to to go into the gym. A lot of people, it can be an intimidating place, you yes. know. So you might have you know a, a bigger person in there or an yeah. older person in there who quote unquote doesn't belong, but the fact that they're making the effort, got to commend them for it. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's kind of a thing. It's like. I don't like to have a huge amount of rules, but I don't want to have no rules either. That's just yeah. like agreed upon chaos at that point. I mean, it's like, yeah. but there has to be some level, like you said, enforcement. If somebody's hitting on somebody, you know, it's like, this This is not what this is for. Like, yeah, I, I mean, dating I, I, apps. Go do something. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so many places for that. <laughs> I've heard of guys following girls in the parking lot. What? Leaving a note on their car. Wow. And, oh, oh, it, oh! It gets crazy. Really? <laughs> I've seen that. Crazy man, it gets crazy, and even to the point where, like, you know, like I said, I train mostly women, so I'll post my my girls, and you know, sometimes they want me to tag them, sometimes they don't want me to tag them, and my thing is like, guys, listen up. <laughs> if you see me post a girl and I don't tag her, don't send me a DM like, oh, what's her act? What's her name? What's <laughs> 
I didn't tag her. <laughs> more than more likely than not, I didn't I, I didn't tag her because she doesn't want to be tagged. Yeah. Or maybe she doesn't have social media. So I think, you know, just this guy guys do a lot in the gym, man. And um it it, it a lot of people are trainers that do the creepy stuff. Unfortunately, right. it gives us a bad rap. Right. Yep. Wow, man. So you said that you kind of uh kind of accidentally or kind of you got into training. It maybe it wasn't your main thing mm -hmm. you were thinking of. Tell me a little bit about that, how you worked your way into the business. Yeah. So I, I grew up playing basketball competitively. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to get a D1 scholarship. Uh, you know, mediocre player, nothing special. Uh, I had dreams of playing overseas at the college. I, I, I mean, I knew I wasn't going to the NBA, but I just wanted the experience of playing professionally. But the, the issue is when you grow up playing basketball, football, baseball, soccer, a lot of times these tournaments, they take over your life. Yeah. You don't have a life outside of it. So that's pretty much all you know. So I struggled when I graduated and, um, you know, I didn't know how to transition into the real world without basketball. So hit a depression phase, uh, you know, still living at home with mom, got a job at the front desk. And mind you, you know, I'm at the work in the front desk at a popular gym. So I got former teammates, former coaches coming in, seeing me behind the desk, super embarrassing, probably the lowest moment of my life. Um, and uh, but I just worked out every day and I felt better after, you know, getting in better shape, getting stronger. And there was a trainer at the gym. He was like, yeah, he was like, yo, you need to train, you need to train, uh, forget everything else. He was like, you're going to kill it. And I kept telling him no. And, uh, you know, I got denied on job interviews with my degree. Every every job interview denied every agent basketball team overseas. And um, so I said, all right, let's do it. So he got me a, a discount on the certification. You know, those are, you know, those could be a thousand dollars. I got the discount for 150 and um, took the test, passed it. And um, so basically I just, you know, changed my whole brand on social media from Hooper to trainer. So I would bring in, you know, I might bring a pretty girl in for free trainer. I would do like, um, you know, have my friends come in. And then I started having my former my former uh, teammates that are current athletes, they come in and work out. So they would bring their family members, mom, dad, brother, sister, cousins. And I pretty much built the business off of my basketball network. And yeah, definitely the best decision I've ever made. So I'm definitely thankful that I was able to make that leap. And a lot of guys, you know, not just basketball, all sports, they hold on to that. And yeah kind of you know miss out on opportunity it kind of stuck in that world so I, I was glad i had the strength to get out of it i feel like you just did marketing 101 with it you just you knew what you knew your lane you knew yeah. what you had done and you say you know what i'm gonna market myself i'm gonna bring different people in here i'm gonna showcase myself with other people and i mean that's just like marketing 101 for training <laughs> you know it's, a lot of people don't get that it's like just it's the not. basics yeah, you got to you got to use your strengths. And um so that you know, I had a strong basketball network I did it my whole life. So, you know, I know so many people in the area and um you know, I got to ha have a lot of followers because of basketball. So, yeah. kind of just used it like that. So, tell me a little bit what you think about the current state of our business, our industry, like where it is now, where you think it's headed. Um I, I feel like right now fitness is, is crucial uh, with the world getting more obese. Yeah. Um, you know, city, cities, cities rising and, and putting in um, new infrastructure with, with more and more bad restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, with the, the, the body positivity and the, the, the obesity acceptance. Yeah. I feel like fitness is crucial right now. And I feel like the people at the top of the game, they have strong influence. Yeah. But outside of that, um, it's hard because um, I, I don't think a lot of people, a lot of trainers specifically, they don't realize the impact we can have. Yeah. A lot of people don't want to face the backlash. Like, I'll, you know, yeah. I'll post a video going on a rant and people be like, we don't want to hear that. <laughs> I don't care about you, but it's <laughs> going to affect someone positively. Yes. 
and um and and along with the with the with the gym club culture that's ruining this the state of fitness right now yeah and that has to stop it has to stop it has to stop yeah but um you know i see a lot of people like myself speaking up on it and uh, I, th I think we just got to continue yeah i think so i mean it's interesting you mentioned um obesity acceptance yep i've been i i've been a big uh I'll say rant about this, <laughs> like kind of like, I, you know, listen, and like someone will come and talk to me. We're like, well, like health at every size. I'm like, but is there health at every size? Like if someone's like anorexic, how are there? How is their health in that? Like, exactly. Well, how is their health in 700 pound person? Like this, how can we even be saying this? Like, no, man, it's crazy. And I, I blame men for a lot of it because a girl uh, about two or three weeks ago, she's in her mid 20s. She's young. And um, she's probably, you know, she's around 40% body fat. So she's a bigger girl. Yeah. But she's doing great, though. But, right. um, I, you know, the biggest thing with my clients is the mindset shift. So we made, uh, you know, we were in there working out and I was getting on her about what she eats. Yeah. And she was like, well, I mean, guys like big girls anyway nowadays. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I'm what? like, what? <laughs> so even if they're, even if some guys like big girls, yeah. you know. That's no excuse for you to neglect your health yeah. and not tackle it while you're in your mid twenties, because it only gets harder when you get to thirties, you get to forties, you get to fifties. People do it, yeah, but it's so much harder. It's easier to to maintain it if you you know tackle it right now in your twenties and get a hold of it. So, guys, stop doing that. <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop encouraging these women to to, to uh, you know stay thick is what they call. It. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. It Crazy. is. It's it was like we swing through these. We have these big pendulum swings. It's like our body positivity. I mean, listen, I'm all for people being themselves and stuff. But like if something is like a chronic condition that is negatively affecting your life, yep. it's very difficult for me to say that's a positive thing. I'm like, yep. we're just in denial here. I mean. Yeah, it's 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 like a sin to tell the truth now. Yeah. <laughs> You can't be brutally honest. And sometimes, and that's one thing I'm thankful for with playing sports, you know, it really built my character to a point where I can accept the truth. Yeah. Because you're going to have a coach. If you suck on defense, he's going to tell you you suck on right. defense. He's going to cuss words, call you some names. Yeah. All right, next play, let's go. But everybody doesn't have that. A lot of kids growing up don't even play sports nowadays. So when yeah. they become adults and the real world happens and it hits them, it's hard for them to accept that. And a lot of people are not willing to change. They're not willing to be receptive to new information. Yeah. And they're not willing to work hard. They don't want to work hard. <laughs> not want to work hard. People are freaking lazy <laughs> nowadays. People are lazy. And <laughs> they don't understand. You got to be uncomfortable sometimes, whether of that's course. a relationship, finances, work, and you got to do it with fitness. And you got to do it with your nutrition. You got to be uncomfortable yeah. sometimes. And you might have to go, you might have a birthday party or a restaurant to go to with your friends and your trainer saying, you're not, you can't drink right now. You're not drinking yeah. alcohol right yeah. now. Go have fun, but no alcohol. Yeah. And people can't, they can't understand that. You know, it's interesting. I just had a talk um, and it was one of us like reframing exercises, self-care was part of it. I was just hosting it. But I was saying how like, you know, we got to reframe like, like everything can't be about joy. Like exercise is not always joyful. Yep. But we're always telling people, do something you love to do. Do something you enjoy. Okay, listen, I mean, yeah, there's some of it, but is it going to actually improve the different parameters of fitness for you? Yep. And I like to dance, but doesn't mean that I'm improving all, you know, my. it's like, it's like exactly. you know what I mean? It's like, you're going to have to be have discomfort to improve. And I think we're trying to tell people just do stuff you like to do. That's not that challenging. Yeah. Okay, if that's what you're trying to do. I mean, <laughs> come on. Yeah. If you, if you look at the benefits of building muscle over your lifetime, yeah. it, you realize it's, it's necessary, you know, yes. better for you as you, as you get older. Right. Mm -hmm. So it might not be comfortable, but if I want to be the best I can be in my 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, I'm going to have to build some muscle. Yes. You no. Know? So it's just, that's, that's just, that's just um, one example of it. But 
um, yeah, you definitely got to got to get used to to being uncomfortable. And I train a lot of moms and I, I, I love making analogies with the moms. I might say something like you went through childbirth, right? <laughs> that didn't feel good. <laughs> yeah. Something beautiful came from it. That's true. <laughs> so That's true. Same thing with, with, with fitness, you know, or, you know, they might have a long day with the kids and yep. They don't want to take them to practice. They don't want to take them to tutoring, but you're going to get it done because that's what the kid needs. So it's the same with fitness. You got to take care of yourself too. Most definitely. So I think these are kind of like challenging the status quo. It's like, just do something you like. Like, but will will you improve though? Like, (laughs) I'm just like that. And that's my whole thing is like, let's stop making everything so comfortable for people all the time. Again, that's a very anti convenience conversation. But it's like it can't always there's a point where you over optimize where this becomes detrimental if it's too um, convenient for people. You know? Yeah, this is this is going to uh, people are going to hate me for this. But, <laughs> but, you know, I see a lot of uh, twerk classes, you oh, know, yeah, yeah. promoted as fitness. Yeah. And, you know, let's let's be real. A lot of the, the people in those classes are not fit. And, you know, they. They need to learn about nutrition. They need to learn about, you know, lifting weights. They need to learn about steady state cardio. Yeah. Need to learn about these things and that isn't doing it. And the thing that's messed up is a lot of, in their mind, they're like, oh, I, I did my fitness fulfill, fulfillment for yeah. the week. I, I, I broke a sweat. I burned some calories and they thinking they're doing something. And it's yeah. like, that's not <laughs> what you, <laughs> um, you know, I, I see all types of stuff like that, but, uh, it's just like the lack of education and fitness, you know, yeah. around the country, all races and both, you know, the, all races, the genders, both genders. Sure. It's like, it's, it's, it's there's, there's a lack. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And then when you're getting information from questionable resources, potentially, and online and different things. So I'm curious your thoughts about influencer culture and fitness and uh how you see that currently man it's it's uh it would be a lot better if we had influencer because a lot of influencers they'll do they'll take years to get their results and then you know they'll get their they'll get a bomb body and just just lie to people for a quick buck and and, and sell a dream unfortunately and it's a great model because people are desperate to lose weight they want a quick result. They don't understand that, hey, you have been having crappy habits for two decades, three yeah. decades. It's not going to take 30 days to <laughs> reverse it. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to take that. Sorry. And people hate to hear it. And then another thing influencers do, you know, like I, I did that steroid episodes. A lot of a lot of people are dying from um, taking steroids. Yeah. And then um a few of like my favorite influencers, I was, you know, heartbroken to find out that, you know, they're on testosterone replacement there, yeah. you know, which is fine. I mean, I, I, I'm, let me take that back. It's not fine, but if you can afford it, I mean, do what you want to do, man. It, it's, it's yeah. your body. But don't try to uh, tell, tell someone, Hey, you need to eat better. You need to do this and that, this and that. And it's easier for you with the testosterone replacement. So yeah. um, I think it's very toxic. But, um, you know, you have myself and there's another guy on Instagram. It's, his name is like Goob to you, G-O-O-B. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. But no. he puts everybody on blast. I mean, oh. like three times a day. <laughs> three times a day. Yeah, no, I'm not joking. Like he puts <laughs> everybody on blast. So, um, you know, people are starting to wake up. I think so. Yeah, it's you know, people just getting more savvy and understand these results, you know, take a long time to get in really good condition yep you know nothing but it's you know kind of the old thing is the snake oil salesman it's like hey i'm gonna use this platform to further my influence and pocket and people are desperate and i'm gonna i'm gonna prey on their desperation uh for people's desire for the quick fix yeah and um i was just thinking about this today and you look at how much crap we spend money on whether it's food yeah. uh, you know vacations alcohol we 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 find the money for that yeah but people complain <laughs> about paying a personal trainer 
the same amount, which you probably spend more than what the personal trainer is charging. True. You crap every month. But you got a problem paying a personal trainer. People will say, I can't afford it. But if you go back and look at your your, your statements. <laughs> for the month, <laughs> look at the statements, baby. <laughs> look at the statements. You know you can afford the trainer. I hate that. I hate that. Yeah. But uh, like, I, like I said earlier, it's just it's, it's the mindset shit. Yeah, that's actually a lot of people. And like a lot of people could actually afford a Absolutely. trainer. They just are not going to take an inventory of their personal spending habits yep. and go, well, maybe I'll just cut back on this, do that. It's just, you know, that requires effort yep. <laughs> to, like, to look at your own finance, which is also scary for a lot of people to really look in there. Yeah, it's like, you know, look looking in the mirror. You don't yeah. want to look at your body. It's the same thing with with anything else, you know. Looking at your finances is, is definitely a parallel to that. But um, yeah, a lot of people think they can't afford a personal trainer, but there's there's you can you you I guarantee you can. Guarantee. For sure. So, yeah. you know, you said you've been in around six years. So what what's your future in training? What do you where do you see yourself wanting to be over time in this? Um, that's a great question. I'm I'm actually still trying to figure that out. Um, yeah. You know, I have I have a, a clothing line, less brunches, more crunches. I have uh, my my YouTube channel, so you know, maybe you know, I might go full if it blows yeah. up, maybe full time podcasting one day. Yeah, uh, a lot of people want me to get my own facility. Uh, they like my brand, they like what I stand for, and you know, they they think it'd be dope and to have my own facility, and they give me you know different ideas and concepts. So. Um, you know, I'm still, still honestly trying to figure that out. But, um, you know, right now I'm just focused on, uh, you know, my podcast and the, the clothing. And then I also have an online training app as well. And, um, awesome. you know, I'm getting new clients on there. So now I'm not physically in the gym as much, but I'm still helping and impacting a lot of people. And that'll help me, you know, scale my business some more. So, um, yeah, those are, those are my main focuses right now, but I'm not sure, you know, which direction I, I actually want to go in. Still trying to figure that out. Is there still a link to like basketball and athletes? Is that still an interest for you or? Yeah, it, it, it is. Um, you know, for a while I was training athletes and, um, you know, athletes, they're home in the summer yeah. for a certain amount of time. So general population kind of became, you know, my bread and butter. But, um, you know, if, if, if I can, I can, you know, travel with an athlete or travel to an athlete, I, I'd definitely be down to do that. The opportunity, um, it's, it's presented itself and, you know, I thought it was going to happen. It ended up not happening. So, you know, I just, just kind of doing my thing right now. Yeah. That's awesome. Listen, I, I love chatting with my colleagues. It's been really awesome spending some time with you, Chris, and, uh, please let everyone know how they can connect with you to learn more about you. Absolutely. You can catch me on YouTube at uh, C Marty Fit, C A C M A R T Y Fit. Um, you can catch me at the same name on Instagram and TikTok, C Marty Fit, C M A R T Y Fit. And you can uh, check out my clothing brand, Less Brunches, More Crunches. And, um, you know, if you're interested in training, you want some gear, or you just have a question, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. But, um, you know, definitely check out that podcast which is on YouTube and Apple Podcasts at Less Brunches, More Crunches. Um, you know, I, I, I tackle a lot. I am educate on there, and I have a unique perspective on fitness. Most definitely. Listen, Chris, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, man. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.